using proper tools and the recommended techniques results in an easy installation and will avoid any potential for cracks and leaks. It's a step-by-step -step process that starts with cutting pipe to length. CPVC pipe cuts easily with a ratchet cutter, a wheel-type plastic tubing cutter, a power saw, or a fine tooth saw. It's important to cut the pipe square. A square cut provides the surface of the pipe with maximum bonding area. If there's any evidence of damage or cracking, measure at least two inches beyond the damage, then recut the pipe. Once you've made the cut, Deburring and beveling are important for the best fit. Burrs and filings can prevent proper contact between the pipe and fitting during assembly. A chamfering tool works well to bevel the pipe. When beveling the pipe, turn the chamfering tool in one direction, not back and forth. A slight bevel at the end of the pipe will help ease insertion into the socket. This will minimize the chance that the edges of the pipe will wipe solvent cement from the fitting socket as you insert the pipe. Before assembling pipe sections, take a clean, dry rag and wipe off any loose dirt, plastic shavings, or moisture. Particles can weaken the joint strength and moisture slows the cure time. Prepare fittings the same way. Make sure they're free of any burrs, filings, dirt, or solvents before assembly. Inspect each fitting for any damage. When everything is cut, clean, dry, and ready, check for correct fit. The pipe should go in about a third to two thirds of the way. Contact between the pipe and the fitting is essential in making a good joint. Use daubers that are properly sized for the pipe and fitting when applying solvent cement. For 3 quarter inch and 1 inch pipe, use a half inch dauber. For all larger pipe, use a larger dauber, generally part of the quart size cement can. Only solvent cements recommended in the manufacturer's installation instructions are permitted to be used. Under the can is the date of manufacture. Most manufacturers recommend discarding cement two years from this date. Check with the manufacturer for additional guidelines. Apply a heavy, even coat of cement to the outside of the pipe. Apply a medium coat to the entire fitting socket. For pipe sizes one and a quarter inch and above, a second coat will need to be applied to the pipe. Remember these best practices. In temperatures below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, extra care should be taken to prevent damaging the pipe during handling. Allow added time for cement to set and cure. If cement is lumpy or gelled, it must be discarded. In temperatures above 80 degrees Fahrenheit, evaporation can be an issue. Make sure cement joints are still wet when assembling. If cement is dry, cut and replace with new pipe or fitting. Assemble pipe and fittings consistently with a few simple steps. Insert the pipe into the fitting. Be sure to twist the pipe one quarter turn while inserting it into the fitting during the solvent cement joining process. Rotating the pipe into the fitting ensures that the solvent cement is spread evenly on both the pipe and the fitting. It also allows you to make sure the fitting is aligned properly at the connection. Hold the connection for 30 seconds to give the bond a chance to take. In cold temperature installation, you need to allow for extra set and cure times. Take a moment to check the end of your fitting. There should be a continuous bead of cement all the way around the joint. If not, cut it out, discard, and start over. If the joint looks good, wipe off any excess solvent cement with a rag and move on to the next one. Cement cure times are important to trouble-free installations. Cure times vary greatly by temperature, relative humidity, pipe size, and fit. You'll need to check manufacturer's installation instructions for more detail. However, a few common sense guidelines will ensure a leak-free connection. If the pipe is larger, the temperature is cold, and the humidity is high, setting and curing times will be longer. If repairs or alterations require cut-ins to an existing sprinkler line, extended cure times are required. Tables like these are available in the complete installation guide through the manufacturer or on their websites. Take care, be aware, check the charts. You can use just about any type hanger as long as it complies with NFPA standards. Check the manufacturer's recommendations and the appropriate local codes if you have any questions about whether or not to use a certain type of hanger. If the hanger is metal, make sure there aren't any sharp edges that might damage the pipe. Proper spacing of the hangers is explained in the manufacturer's installation instructions. One important note, however, spacing is critical near the sprinkler head drops. Without proper bracing, water pressure could force sprinkler heads up through the ceiling. Once the connections are made, all joints are properly cured, and the assemblies are hung, the system needs to be pressure tested. 
Fill the system with water and then bleed the air from the highest and farthest sprinklers. Compressed air or gas should never be used to test CPVC fire sprinkler systems. Check to find out at what pressure the system will be maintained. If it's over 150 PSI, you need to add 50 PSI to the system pressure to determine the test pressure. Some local codes may also require inspection by the fire marshal. If you find any leaks, mark them, drain the system, cut the damaged sections out, and replace them. Those are the basics of our best practices for the proper installation of all CPVC fire safety systems. If there are questions on your project, consult the manufacturer's installation guidelines, check their website, or call the manufacturer's representative.